Hi, I'm Phil from Spy Ridge Reptiles and today we're going to look at chameleons. Alright, here we have a lovely example of a Mellors chameleon or a giant wand horned chameleon. Now at the moment he's not the happiest of bunnies. Um, I handle this animal very rarely, just been doing a bit of a clean out in a viv. If you have a look at the colour changes here, colour changing for chameleons, yes it is camouflage, but more so moods. At the moment he's, you can see by these black spots that he's not happy with what I'm doing. What he wants to do is get straight back in his viv. He's also currently having a bit of a shed. He's almost finished, so all this dry skin here will be off in a few days and they'll look lovely. So let's pop him back. Come on in. Now, Mellor's chameleons, they aren't the easiest. In fact, in my, in my personal experience, they're one of the hardest or harder chameleons to keep. No chameleon is easy. Those of you who wanted to keep a chameleon as a first lizard, I would say, depending on, you know, think again. They are not the handling, let's get out and play with lizard that, you know, when you look at a bearded dragon or anything like that, you can get them out, they're a pet. These are an absolutely amazing animal, but they are almost something to look at. Alternative to a fish tank almost. Do a beautiful planted setup and then just watch them and, and admire the beauty. Now if you were wanting to start off keeping chameleons, leave, leave these guys for now and we'll move straight on to the most umpiest lizards in my view on the planet. You do get, just like anything, you do get some good ones, but we've got the Yemen chameleon or your veiled chameleon, same animal. Let's start off looking at a youngster. I've got some babies in here, these I, I bred these last year, if I can actually get in the viv, it doesn't look like I can, there we go. Now these guys, you look at these, you go into a reptile shop, you'll see these guys and you think they're so cute, yes, they are, they're lovely. Um, in fact we're going to have a little bit of sex, sex education here boys and girls, how to sex a chameleon. Now very easy with these guys. I'm going to ask my glamorous assistant Fisher. So we have what? Well, we have a girl here. Now, if we have a look on the back legs, nothing. No spurs, nothing at all. Even at this size, as youngsters, you will see little spurs on the back legs. These are showing, obviously, that they're a boy. Uh, let's try and find a boy. That's if we've got a boy in here. Now, if you have a look at this one, you can see these tiny little. There we go, tiny little spurs. So we have male, female. Now chameleons, obviously I'm sounding like a right hypocrite here, shouldn't be kept together and I'm keeping them together. These are young, these are not sexually mature yet. I'm a shot, I'm keeping them, keeping them here, it's not a permanent home. Just have one. Or if you're wanting to breed, separate enclosures. They are very territorial, they will stress very, very easily. So if you are wanting purely a pet, chameleon, as nasty as it sounds, I would just go for a male. The females, even though they're, in my view, much more elegant, the female Yemen looks very similar to as it does as a baby. It stays, stays almost the same, this beautiful green, small veil, small crest here. But they are prone to getting egg bound. They really are, and it's heartbreaking. They will, they will produce eggs and lay eggs, whether they've been mated or not. And if the environment isn't right, they, they will not make it. So you've got to obviously have that in consideration when keeping these animals. Males, on the other hand, they're fine. Obviously, you're not going to have a problem as far as getting egg-bound goes. But they quite regularly have a bit of an attitude problem. You can have a look at male Yemen now. Now, if you want an animal, obviously, to feed out your hands, things like that, these guys are great. They will do that. This chameleon here is actually called Lenny. He uh, came to me, um, I bred him, sold him to a customer. The customer then realised that, you know, Yemen chameleons aren't 
as a cute, cuddly, get them out and play room as you may think. Come on. For Yemen, he's relatively steady, but again, you can see now, he's not a fully, fully grown adult male, catch the chameleon time. But you can notice this large, large crest, large veil here, much more prominent on the males. And also the colour is completely different. Where the females, they almost are limes of lime green. The males have these dark bands going down them. There we go. Good boy. So he will get bigger than this. I mean, the largest Yemen I've ever seen, if we can get this little monster off. Nose to vent, that sort of size plus tail. Feed on the diet of locusts. Now, as far as keeping these animals, again, everyone has their opinion. All the animals in here I keep in the melamine. But what you've got to bear in mind, you need good ventilation for these animals, very good ventilation. And also, because of the way, no chameleon drinks still water, water has to be moving. So we provide this by spraying. A fogger system, spray system, rain chamber, or even a dripper system, or if you're as much of a cheapskate as me, plastic cup with a pinhole in the bottom, fill it with water and hang it from the top of a viv. Let it drip onto uh, the plants underneath. As long as they're drinking the water droplets and not getting dehydrated, that's a real problem with chameleons and people keeping chameleons. They, they, are, they, they dehydrate so easily. So keep the water in there, keep spraying. So again, if you've got him in a melamine wooden viv, basically a chipboard viv, it's going to warp. So take all these things into consideration. The Exoterra glass tanks, um, there'll be some new ones out very soon, which are three foot high, three foot long, and uh, 18 inches deep. These will be these will be suitable. There we go. So chameleons, fantastic lizard. We're now going to look at another species of chameleon. Um, I haven't got an adult here. I've got some babies, baby panther chameleons. Now, there's loads of different forms, colour forms of panthers. Now panthers come from Madagascar. Now these are, I've got some sambadas and nosy bees in here. At the moment, as youngsters, their colours are nothing to write home about. But when these guys colour up, out of this world. I'm sure if you uh, keep viewing, you'll see me bring up some of my blue diamonds at some point. Absolutely stunning, stunning chameleons. Yeah. If you look at his eyes, just like any, obviously all the chameleons, the way their eyes sit, suited, they can see all, my, all the way around, full side view, to where I am here, obviously for predators, food. You can see the colour change just in, our, just in the last few seconds, how he's lightening up now. Okay. We'll pop this guy back. Now this is a male, females are smaller, again keeping these guys. I've got two young males in at the moment, I'm having no problems with them together. Females I've got separately. We're now going to have a look at another, yet another African chameleon. There are a number of subspecies of Jacksons. This is the largest, it's still not fully grown, but this is the largest of the Jacksons uh, chameleons, or freehorn chameleons. Again, absolutely beautiful animal. I'm not even going to explain why it's called a freehorn chameleon, you can clearly Put see. This guy back. Now this guy, like I said, I, I had him as part of a pair now. All well, the chameleons you've seen so far uh, are egg layers. Not him, obviously, because it's a boy and boys don't lay eggs. But Jackson's, uh, they're live bearers, so they give birth to live young. Unfortunately, um, his fema the, the female that I had with this uh, male, um, she actually died giving birth about two months ago, passed away. So he's just a solo male now. No more fun. No. So we're going to pop him back. But it does happen. That's the thing with chameleons. They have one of the shorter lifespans as far as keeping lizards. They, they, they do die, unfortunately. I mean, the best will in the world, you do lose them. Uh, Jacksons especially, a lot of them are coming in wild caught. I only sell captive bred animals here. Um, although the male that you've seen, he's actually a long-term captive. So he, he's actually the only wild-caught or long-term captive animal I've got in the shop. Everyone else is captive bred. This guy was captive bred, which is why he's up for so much. I mean, you can pick these up for under a hundred pounds wild-caught. But when it comes to captive bred animals, you can double, triple it.